Hello, Carrots here. Welcome to my channel. I'm just here to tell you a little bit about my channel. Occasionally, I'll make a tutorial about how to do something that people have been asking me how to do, and I've decided that it's too hard to keep retyping over and over again, so I've made videos of it, and when somebody asks me how to do something, I'll just tell them now to just go watch the video, and I do put extras up. There's 14 there now. You can pause if you'd like to have a look through what they are all about. I narrate my stories. I assume I'm speaking to an adult audience, so I wouldn't recommend any of them for young children. Perhaps even young teens may not be very happy with what I've got to say in some of these videos. I don't stick very close to reality. Anything's possible. I've been accused of being very surreal in some of them, so that's it. There's a list of stories there, and I will now go through each of them briefly. So either continue watching the video from here on in where I cover a few of the stories or if this is all you need to know thank you for watching. I do hope you decide to subscribe to the channel and watch the videos. In 2017 I got a new computer and I put the base game on it and I patched to patch 1.55. There were people who were asking for base game only sims to be shared so before I added anything else I made a bunch of base game only sims because I figured the only way I could guarantee they were base game only was to have only the base game installed. That's my logic anyway. Two of those sims were Oscar and Louise. They were made separately. I never had any thought of putting them together. But I decided I should play with a couple of my sims and test them out. And this pair put together are hysterically funny. So I had to make a video about them, which meant I had to start again. Now in the game, they had 15 children, and those children started getting a bit repetitive after a while with only two sets of genetics to draw from. So in the videos, I have given them each a set of parents. So now we've got six sims for when Oscar finally meets Louise, and they do finally get married in the videos. Of course, as time went by with all those children, they needed nannies, and I added other sims to their household. The Isla Paradiso bunch was the very first stories that I made for YouTube. This is where I learned about YouTube. The first playlist is with them all in Isla Paradiso. Initially it was meant to be a single sim but it just kept growing the household. The original aim was to get a badge for making 300 elixirs. Various households I've had have made the 300 elixirs but I've never got the badge. So I gave up on that and then they started trying to complete the badges for Island Paradise and that didn't work either. So I gave up on that and then I started sending them off on tombs and that's worked they've been trying to complete the tomb collection for each of the three world adventure worlds so there's been some far out walkthroughs for the tombs and we've got down to the last group which are the two huge tombs that are under the nectary in France and there's two pieces of the French tomb collection in one of each of those two tombs so that's what they've got left to do of course one of the things that happened was Haley is one of the genies and she's engaged to Salty Seaworth she had a bachelorette party and I went off somewhere else with other sims and while I was away Mia Azul the mermaid died and I got a video of her swimming as a yellow ghost she must have died of dehydration and Haley bound her to the household using one of the philosopher's stones that they've got so this has been a popular series I did some research on Isla Paradiso and the Island Paradise badges and discovered that the badges I was missing could only be achieved with a single sim household. So I started a new game, called it Carolyn and Friends, added Carolyn to the household. She worked hard and she got all of the missing Island Paradise badges and then I moved her to Sunlit Tides, started a new game with her and added six new friends to her household. And now they are working their way through the University Life badges. But they've got 44 University Life badges still to achieve. They've only achieved three so far and I already had a small handful of those badges from earlier games. The McFluff story was inspired by a skin I saw once on a tumbler belonging to Moonskins93. 
and I had a bit of a think of how could I use that and I decided on the McFluff story. Old Gertie McFluff is a witch and she has 15 cats and the way she got those cats was she accidentally turned 15 of her least favourite people into cats and then she was shocked and horrified to discover that she couldn't turn them back into humans again. So the McFluff story is trying to find a spell that will allow her to turn those cats back into humans. It's going to take a few generations and Gertie is generation zero because she's never going to have any children but she does sort of adopt a daughter and they have children and it is the fourth generation of that family that will actually find the solution but it doesn't it's not a solution without problems and that skin that originally inspired me is going to feature in some of the not quite so successful attempts at turning cats into humans in the Sims game there is a head of the household badge which requires you to have a single Sim have 30 grandchildren. This is an attempt to get that badge to trigger. It is a difficult badge to get. You can have the 30 grandchildren and the badge not be awarded. I was assured by others that cheating doesn't matter. So I used a mod to give a Sim 15 children, 15 instant babies. They all just suddenly appeared in her front yard and I was thinking that I could then get each of those babies when they grow up to have two babies of their own. The game has got now to the point where several of them have become young adults. There are only children here in the little video I'm showing you but they are starting, they're all teens or young adults at the current state of play in my game and I'm thinking perhaps I might give two or three of them a lot of children instantly and see if the badge triggers or not. And if it doesn't then I'll just have to start again and start doing it more slowly and more like an actual game. That chap there that's fishing that adult, he happens to be the father of all of these children, although he never got to meet their mother. I simply clicked on her and chose instant baby and then chose him from a list of sims that were in the world. But he recognises they're his and he spends time with them. So that's it. There's all sorts of things going on with there's genies in the household. They're all getting their lifetime wishes completed. So I'm making a game out of it but the 30 grandchildren bit is a bit haphazard. We'll see what happens. I'm sort of committed to getting the badge so I'll probably keep trying if first attempt doesn't work. I always said I would never do a challenge in my Sims games because I just don't like sticking to rules. But here I am doing the perfect genetics challenge. There's only four real rules. The founder Sim must have unusual and distinctive hair and eye colour. The heir must have dislikes children trait as does the founder. Other traits are randomised. Air is the first born with the required hair and eye colour. The rule I'm most likely to forget is the third one, other traits randomised. I will try to randomise all of the other traits though. Olivia is my founder and she started out very poor. This is the house as she had it when she first started. She got a job in the culinary career and I made her a future husband called Don who was all set to be in the culinary career. His lifetime wish is to get to the top of the culinary career but of course I didn't control him when I added him to the game and the game turned him into the consignment store clerk which meant he had to work when Olivia was at home and Olivia had to work when he was at home. So their romance was conducted purely by love letters sent from the, from the mailbox. They did eventually get married. We had a lot of trouble getting them married at the wedding centre as well with getting him to actually turn up and be in the same place at the same time. The wedding venue is one that I built years ago and it's got a garden as well as a chapel. And I initially tried to get them married in the garden but I could never get him anywhere near the wedding arch there. So here we are in the chapel. They've been together for quite a while now and they've got several children and everything is doing quite well. So that group that just got out of the bus are their children including a little plant sim girl who appears in another video, Oscar's Childhood. Cindy is the heir and we're waiting for her to age up to teen. She's almost ready to do that. This is a picture of them all just before Cindy aged up to child. There's all sorts of little side stories going on to keep things interesting. The house has grown 
I've discovered the best way to keep toddlers out of puddles is to just remove rain because some parents carry their toddlers to the puddle and leave them there. I do hope you have seen enough to keep you interested and that you will subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an update. And of course there's mermaid videos as well every so often just to give you something to look at. There's no great story attached to them although they are showing you around a house I built. It's huge, too big to play in but it is a bit of fun to show you around it. There's two mermaid stories. One of them I've stopped because the house got unplayable. The, the Cake Island mermaids are now broken up and scattered around the big game. So you'll see them in Oscar's childhood and also in the McFluff story. Thank you for watching and I do hope you will subscribe and enjoy watching all of my videos. Bye bye for now and happy simming.